in the previous video we have created this save system script now in this video we are going to test it by creating a simple setup to spawn uh, cubes at random positions we are going to save the positions of these cubes and we are going to recreate those cubes as well so first of all in the hierarchy of our project let's right click and let's create an empty game object and let's call this a game object save system and let's drag here our save system uh, script so that now we have the save name and the index that we are going to give it and this will be the save data underscore zero which will be our name of the saved data file now let's create a new game object create empty and let's call this game object maybe test or save test and let's create in the scripts folder a new c sharp script so right click create and c sharp script and let's call it test spawner okay i'm going to drag this script onto our save test and i'm going to open it in visual studio great here what we are going to do is we are going to delete the start and update methods since we do not need them let's create instead public save system and we are going to drag here a save system reference uh, okay great now we will also need to have public game object and this will be the prefab that we are going to spawn now to be able to save this we will need to store this spawned game object somewhere so let's create a public list and let's call this uh, of type game objects and let's call it maybe created prefabs and let's set it to be equal to new list of game objects great we will create four methods here first our uh, first one will be public void and let's call it clear and here we are going to simply call for each tap tap to create it from the snippet in visual studio bar item in our created prefabs and we are going to simply destroy all the items or all the prefabs and clear the game area so we are going to at the end call created prefabs.clear to clear the list this will be useful when we want to load the data now next we want to spawn our prefabs so let's create public void spawn prefab and here we are going to simply randomly select a location for the prefab to spawn and we are going to spawn it so let's type var position equals random and we are going to use the random from unity engine dot random and we are going to call dot dot inside unit sphere and this will return us a random vector three point inside the sphere with the radius of one so what we can do is simply multiply it by five so we can see some spread between the prefabs and we are going to cre call create uh, created prefabs dot add and we are going to add instantiate and we are going to call our object which is the prefab we are going to give it a position and we are going to give it a quaternion dot identity as the rotation now we will create two methods which will be public void save game and the second one will be public void load game okay and here is the difficulty because we need to pass a string format to our save system it requires a string data to save but right now we have a list of game objects and actually we do not need to save it but rather the positions of each object so to do that we are going to need to serialize the data for our position now unfortunately the position which is a vector 3 is not serializable by a json utility which we will use to convert our data to a string so to make sure that we can save a position we will need to create our custom struct or a class that will be able to serialize the data from a vector 3 uh, that we will pass as the position to our prefab so to do this we are going to create underneath the load game a new public we can create struct or a class we are going to create class and we are going to call it vector serialization and to make sure that we can serialize it 
we are going to add above a an attribute called serializable. Now, if you don't have it, Alt Enter on it, and you should be able to use the quick help menu to say using system, which will appear at the top here. And now we will be able to serialize this vector three serialization class. And to be able to serialize the vector, all we will need to do is to save the x, y, and z coordinates. So let's create public float x comma y comma z and now to make sure that we can save those values let's right click here in the class inside the class and we can select quick actions and here we have the generate constructor and in visual studio this allows us to quickly create a constructor for this and instead of passing the x y and z coordinates we are going to simply pass here the vector 3 and let's call it position and we are going to copy the name and simply assign it position.x to the this.x, position.y to the this.y, and position.z to the this.z. So now we have saved our vector. And in addition to this, we can create a public vector3 method called getValue. And we are going to simply return new vector3. And let's pass here x, y, and z. And we are going to be able to retrieve this vector from this serialized version of a vector 3. Great. Now, this will allow us to save the data for a single vector. Now, of course, we want to save the whole list of game objects. Unfortunately, we cannot really save the list of game objects, or rather the list of positions, and serialize them to the JSON format. Instead, what we will need to do is create another class public class and let's save it uh, let's call it save data and here in this class we are going to simply create a list of our vector 3 serialization let's call it data or maybe position data okay we can create constructor by typing c tor tab tab to create it and we can simply call position data equals new list of vector3 serialization now to add to this data we are going to call public void add and we are going to pass here vector3 position and inside this method we are going to simply call our position data dot add and we are going to create new vector3 serialization and pass here the position that we have received from this uh, parameter okay i have misspelled the name of the argument here for this method and that's it now we can access it but to serialize this list we will need to make sure that it is either public and that says why we need to add it or a serialized field great so now this will allow us to serialize the data for our list of game objects now, of course, I have forgotten to add the serializable attribute above the uh, name of the class. So let's add serializable. And this would be it. Only now, can we pass this data to our saved, um, to our saved system? Now we can see that we have an error with the random because there is a conflict between the system.random and unity engine.random. So if you select the random, alt enter on it, you can select using random equals unity engine.random. And this will create this statement at the top here. And now uh, Unity will always use the Unity Engine.random version of random class. Okay. So with all that done, all we need to do is call the on the save game. We will need to create save data. Data equals new save data. And we are going to look for each tab tab var item in created prefabs. And we are going to call our data dot add, and we are going to add item dot transform dot position. And at the end, we are going to call our save system dot save data, and we are going to pass here our data. But we cannot really pass it pass it in this form. Instead, we are going to create above it bar data to save. And we will need to use the JSON utility to convert the data that is serializable to the JSON format. So we are going to call JSON 
utility this is inbuilt class in unity dot to json and we can pass any object that is serializable and so let's call data now this uh, if the object is not serializable will simply return null or empty string so if you have any bug the best way to check what is going on is to check if the json utility was able to serialize the data that we have passed to it so now we can pass this data to save since this to json returns a string to our save system and we are good to go okay last method that we will need to implement is this load game so here to load the game what we will need to do is simply call a string data to load equals empty string and we are going to call our data to load equals our save system dot load data and this is it now we will either end up with a data or not depending on if the load the, the saved system was able to load the data or not so to prevent any actions done on an empty string we are going to simply check if our string with the capital s is null or empty and we are going to pass data to load and if this is equal to false so we have not uh, not empty string this means that this loading data was successful and we were able to load something and only in this case we want to perform some action on it so what we will need to do is simply retrieve our save data type of object from our json that we have loaded and to do that let's type save data maybe data uh, is equal to our json utility dot from json and in the triangle brackets we can pass the type save data so this is the class that we want to retrieve and let's pass as the parameter the data to load string that we have received from our save system now we will need to loop through the list of vector3 serializations so for each var position and maybe position data since this isn't exactly the position in our uh, data dot position data so this is the list that we have saved in our save data uh, class and for each of those we should probably create a method that would automatically create for us those prefabs but since this is only one line we can copy it and we can save it uh, we can paste it here for now and for the position we are going to call position data dot get value and this will get us the vector 3 and this is it for the test spawner script that we have created so let's save it and since this video is getting pretty long we are going to create kind of some kind of ui in the next video and test this before we load the starter project so see you in the next video.